Hello, my beautiful, most amazingly bright, shining stars in my universe. How are you tonight? I am doing a okay. I am. I am just so excited about this video. First off, it's my first ever galaxy resin art that I'm going to be doing. And secondly, I am doing this video in collaboration with another amazing, talented, gorgeous, beautiful to look at woman named Tammy from Tan's Creative Corner. This is the TNT Space Explosion collaboration. It doesn't get any more powerful than two Tammies doing one type of painting. At least in my opinion, that is. So after you're done with my video, please go check her out. Tam's Creative Corner. I will link her channel below. Look for her space explosion video. She's just really, really an amazing artist. A, she has great quality videos. They're just really well edited. You know, she's got it together, unlike yours truly, who doesn't know how to do anything with technology. And she's very clear and just her voice is so calming. And I've just loved this woman since the moment I saw her, one of her videos. It, it's just go check her out. You'll love her. So we've decided to do a galaxy pour. So what you see in front of you is a 12 by 24 half inch thick piece of MDF wood that I pr primed using black acrylic paint. Now, the good thing about MDF is that you really don't have to prime it that much because it's not a real wood. It's a pressed wood and it doesn't breathe. So I've literally poured directly on raw MDF with no primer and it doesn't, no air bubbles, nothing. It's perfect to work on. So what I do is I go to Home Depot, I buy a sheet of this for seven dollars i think and i get four 12 by 24s cut out of that one sheet so it's definitely worth the money if you're looking for a less expensive way to pour with resin so i painted it black and now the first thing i have to do is create my star field we'll call it a star field i'm thinking of doing some stars and maybe some odd little round planets like odd colors so what i want to do first though is i want to make my splatters and i'm going to use two different types of paint brushes to hopefully get two different size splatters and for my paint i'm just going to use some fluid titanium white by golden i'm not going to water it down or anything i'm literally going to put some on my Lole Vefe mat that I'm working on here. If you're interested in these, they are awesome to work on, especially resin. They just, everything comes right off, which reminds me, um, I had a viewer say she had a hard time getting a resin off of this when it was cured. And that is not my experience. It is silicone. The only time you would have problems with something like that is if you were to use one of these mats to make a freeform geode and you took your, your silicone caulking and drew the design on this mat, that silicone caulking will adhere to the silicone mat. It's Think of it this way. If you have a resin surface and you pour resin on that surface, they're going to bond together. Okay? So... Silicone and this mat do not go together. That's the only thing that I could think of uh, that would cause that because, I mean, everything peels right off for me. And these little tiny drips here that could be stubborn to get off. Not stubborn because of the mat, just because they're so tiny you got to pick at them. I just put a piece of tape on and they come right off. Okay? So... You know, it, it is what it is. It, there's resin does not stick to these mats. 
especially rock hard cured resin. I mean, it's coming off. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually clean a little spot of my mat. I do need to clean mine eventually here. And I'm going to put a little white paint right onto it. And like I said, I'm hoping that this is fluid enough. It should be though. Fluid enough to me for me to just do some splatters without adding water. Sometimes if the paint is thicker, you have to water it down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I know you guys can't see me right now, but I have my little fan brush that I've just put some paint on the tip and I'm kind of pouncing it on the mat to get some off. And then I'm going to use this brush and from about eight inches away, tap. And you'll get that nice splatter. And we're going to have to let this dry before we move on to the next step. But this isn't going to take very long at all. So I got some nice little ones. Now I'm going to take this other brush that I had. And I'm going to do the same thing. Let's see if we get some bigger splats with this one. Splat all over my face. <laughs> oh my God. Jeez. Splat, splat. No, it's actually doing smaller ones. That's okay though. I'm going to do a couple more. And that's it because I don't want a ton. I also was thinking about drawing in a few stars with a white marker. And that should be good. All right. So we're done with that part. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. And then I'm going to come in with a marker, a white marker. Most likely a uh, Pasca marker. And I'm going to draw in some of those little... cross stars. Uh, I don't know what they're called. So you put a dot and then kind of make a cross and circle in between and then circle in the center, I should say. Well, that looks like a damn centipede. <laughs> oh. Okay, Tammy. <laughs> what am I going to do with that thing? Let you know. There we go. See, I'm smudging. So let me just stop. I'm going to have to put a planet over there. I'm going to dry this really quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's dry. Um... There's a couple like this I'm going to cover up. I don't like that star and this over here. So what I have here is just a white Prisma pencil, colored pencil, and a stencil of circles. And I'm going to first figure out what I want my orientation of my painting to be. So I think I want to do it so that when it's hanging, it's hanging this way, up and down. Not long ways. So, just want to figure out where to put a couple of planets that aren't too big. Because we're going to have some, whole lot of stuff going on in this picture. So, since I need one up here. Maybe we'll do this size here. Kind of 
Okay, we'll do one there. And then we'll do a itty bitty baby one. Right there. To cover that up. And then I want to do the biggest maybe right here. And then what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this off screen. I'm just going to paint these in with an acrylic paint. Uh, just whatever color I choose to use. And then I think I'm going to do one really big one, but I'm going to need something bigger than this. So what I can do is I could take a cup. By the way, save these cups because they come in handy for mixing resin in, mixing your paints in. So I'm thinking just like that, but I want it coming out of the side of the painting. So I'm not going to put the whole cup on there. I'm just going to. Do that, All right? And that may be even too much of it sticking out, but we'll see. We could always do that one and then do another smaller one right in front of it. Now let's do that. There we go. Okay, so now I have my planets, and I'm going to add in a few stars as soon as I figure out how to draw them the right way. And uh, when we come back, I'll just have these painted in a solid color. I'm not doing anything fancy. The resin's going to be the fancy part. So I will be right back. Okay, so I have my little planets painted. Um... And now, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some resin. And I'm going to use a lot of clear with a little bit of color. So let me show you the colors I'm using. Today, I am working with Stone Coat Quick Coat for this project. I have a coupon code if you're interested in it. It is a very short working time resin. And the reason why I chose this is because I'm doing layers in this painting. So this is Purple Galaxy by Color Art. This is Aquamarine by Color Art. And I have to go really quick, because like I said, I only have 10 minutes. It's Aquamarine. This here is Teal by Larez. Then we have Hot Pink by Just Resin. Beautiful color. Okay. Purple Rain, Lorez. And uh, Turquoise, Lorez. So, first thing I'm going to do is take my clear and get it out of this cup because it's not advisable to leave quick coat resin or any other resin in a large amount like this. So, I'm just going to dump it all out and we're going to spread it all over the canvas. And let's see something here. I want to reserve a little bit of that clear. All right, so I'm just going to put that to the side. 
and then I'm going to use my hand to spread this out. I don't know why my board is wobbling there. All right. Sorry if it's a little crooked. It is what it is right about now. I hope I have enough to reserve that clear. I thought I made enough. So I'm just spreading it out over the whole piece. And then what I'll do is I will add a little bit of my colors into the four corners of the painting. This painting is going to go flying in about 2.0. I think that, no, nope. yeah, I'm using those little painter pyramids. I thought they would be easier for this, but I guess not. I guess not. Let me get my Posca pen out of here. And my dryer, my heat gun. My heat gun. All right, so I'm not necessarily worrying about the sides right now because I have a couple more layers to go before I worry about those. So I'll just wipe them down quick, but okay. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna just compile some of these colors together not much okay my hands are dripping drippy drippy you only need a little bit of color as a matter of fact i should have Probably not mixed up so much color and kept more clear, but I was rushing. We'll see how it goes. This is just layer one. Aha, hair on that one. Okay, then we need up here some of that hot pink and the purples. I think maybe we'll come down like this a little bit. And I also want to do a little purple in there. And then some of that galaxy color. And then I'm going to take my clear that I reserved and I'm going to put it right on top of those colors. What that's going to do is it's going to push those colors down a little bit into the bottom layer of resin and add some depth. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to leave that just like that, and I'm going to try to get this glove off and blow these around a little bit. First, 
No, I'm not going to torch. I'm not going to bother. We'll do the heat gun first. Get it nice and hot. And I'm going to start moving it. Ooh, that's smoking. Hard to move this quick coat. All right. All right. Love these here. This, this here, not so much. I like that better. I like that a little better.
in that too now. All right, so that's the end of layer one. We're going to let that sit for about four hours and it will be cured. Um, you just torch it quick. Now on layer two, we'll come back and we will add a lot more clear, less pigment, and you'll see the layers start to build up and you'll see the depth. But whenever you do a painting that has layers um, and you want to build depth, you start with the most color on the bottom and work your way up in layers with the least amount of color. So I'll probably do three layers on this. All right, and I'll, uh, yeah, that's looking pretty cool so far. So let me give you a close up since the ring light is in your view. Okay, here we go. I may even come in with some uh, lighter colors. Okay. All right, so that's the end of layer one. See you in layer two. All right, my beauties, it's about three hours later and solid. That's why I love working with this stuff for quick, simple applications, such as just a few colors as I did here or doing a top coat. You don't have to wait that 24 hours to continue on. Um, it, it's just, I really love it. So let me just give you a really good peek at this first layer. Also for the, uh, planets, I forgot to mention, you're going to see me do a video on these colors after this video. Um, these are the new primary element colors that are out. This one's called Dragonfire. This one over here is Vavavoom Red or Vavoom Red, and uh, they're really pretty. And the little orange dot down there is Pumpkin Spice. But I will do a tutorial on those separately, but I wanted to mention what they were. So now what I'm going to do, and I do apologize about that glare, but there's nothing I can do. Black, this happens all the time. So now what I want to do is I want to create a, a visual that makes it look there like there are planets crossing in front of these other planets. So I'm going to take my stencil and first I'm going to try a Posca marker to do my outline. I'm going to take this stencil right here that we used before and I'm going to place it right on top of the resin. And I'm gonna figure out where I want to put this planet. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go right here. Maybe up a little bit. Okay. And right on top of the cured resin, I'm going to take my Posca marker. I'm going to make my outline so I know where to paint. And then I'm going to come back in with some really heavy bodied white paint. And I'm going to color in that circle. So 
Let's see, we have that one there. I have to do one here. Um, I'm wondering if maybe I should. No, we'll go right here. So I'm just going to do one of these with you on camera, and then I'm going to do a bunch more off camera because you don't need to see me do every single one. There we go. I like that one. So again, with my marker. Now, it doesn't leave a really bright line of white, but enough for me to see where I need to paint. All right, so I'll do that other one after. Let me just show you how I paint this area. So this is the white. Oh, what is wrong with this camera? This is the white that I use. It's a really heavy body. And I literally just paint right on top of the resin. I may have to do a couple of layers. Start with this one. But what I want to do is I want to have a nice solid white background so that I can paint on top of this with the primary elements. The primary elements are somewhat transparent in nature so with the white in the background it helps them be more opaque and brighter not that they aren't bright on their own but just working on a clear surface that has black underneath they wouldn't be as bright as if you were working on top of white so i will paint this in i will dry it with my heat gun, not my full size heat gun, my little embossing tool, or you could just let it air dry and then I'll do another layer and then I'll come in and you've seen me use primary elements a million times, so I'm not going to do that on camera. All right, so I gotta switch paint brushes to get this done right or else I'm gonna make a mess. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. When I come back, those will be painted in one of my colors and I will show you the colors that I use to paint them in. All right, so I have my planets painted in. I decided to go with matte colors only because I want there to be a difference between the planets. Some are shimmery, some are not. Now for this la this layer, I'm going to use a different resin because I don't, this is going to be my last layer I've decided besides the top coat that will be done when the painting sells. But as far as working with colors, I want to have a little more freedom with my time and not be so rushed. So for this layer, now I'm going to use the Gallant resin that I have been using. Um, you may have seen it in a couple of videos before. This is sold strictly on Amazon. I have a link down in the description for you guys. Um, I like to use all different resins and here's why. I like to be able to give you all an option as far as, um, hold on a second. I'm just going to try to get my camera to stop focusing here. So I like to give you guys an option if you can't afford uh, some of the other resins. I want to have a resin that is affordable, that is a really good quality. So this is about the same price as Envirotex is in uh, Michael's for the 16 ounce kit. Um, yes, with the one in Michael's, you can use a coupon, but that is not non-yellowing and no VOCs and th this is in my opinion just works just as good as the stone coat or the 
uh, KS that I work. So I like to give you guys a few different options on where to get your resin. Some of you don't have Amazon, so you need to go to a, a not Amazon, but Amazon Prime. So you need to go through, you know, an actual website. And, you know, so just different options. So, but I tell you this, I only work with resins that have a long working time that don't yellow and that have a high heat resistance. So I have the same colors mixed up as the first round, except I've added some of the liquid gold in there. If you're, this stuff is like, it comes in a three pack. I have it in my Amazon shop and it is like molten gold. In the cup, I just actually I absolutely love it. It's uh, the same as liquid leaf, which I also love, except you get more bang for the buck buying those bigger bottles. So I'm going to put down a bunch of clear. Now for this layer, I've mixed up way less color and have a lot. I have here almost 15 ounces of clear, so it's going to be a lot of clear. We're going to work those colors. We got that extra time now. And we can kind of relax. I get way over. Uh, I got almost two hours out of this last time. It was the craziest thing. I have been mixing this vigorously. I mean, really, really fast. And I want you to look at this. There's like hardly any bubbles in it. So that's another good thing. And it is a uh, casting and coating resin. And it, it's a thinner resin as far as the viscosity, but it mixes together so easily. I love it because my hands, it just kills me to mix resin. And it, it just really works good. So here we go. I'm gonna put down a bunch of the clear as I said, right over that acrylic paint that I painted in. And I am going to reserve some here because I want to be able to put my colors down and then push them down into this clear with this clear. And that'll add a lot of depth. So we're just going to spread it out again. Now you may have noticed uh, when I was using the quick coat, that when I was using the heat gun, it looked like it was smoking a lot, which it was smoking a lot. That happens with the quick coat because it is a fast setting resin. It gets hot quick, but it doesn't, I wasn't actually burning my resin when that was happening. As you can see, this dried just fine. It's just something that happens with that. And you'll also notice if you ever get it, that when you're done working with it, um, the colors that are left in the cup that you didn't use, those will start smoking and seize up. It's meant to fill gaps and seams when doing countertops. And um, so that's why it's only a 10 minute working time. But if you're doing something like this and just doing a top coat on a painting, it's really a luxury to be able, especially for me that, creates and sells a lot of artwork it's really a luxury to have that uh short working time to be able to get onto the next step you know this this was workable i was able to work on top of it if i wanted to an hour later it wasn't fully cured but it wouldn't have damaged the bottom layer if i started working on top again so that is a plus so now I am concentrating on my sides because we're getting down to the wire here. So I want to make sure they're nice and coated and you just rub your hand along. And that is another question I get a lot of times. What do you do with your sides? So for a piece like this, I will let things flow over where they go and just leave it like that. If I work on a piece that has natural side wood, wood sides, I will tape them before I do anything on the canvas. 
might have those nice gesso blocks that have the two inch sides and they're natural wood or the, the wood rounds. I will tape the sides before I start working on it. This way when I'm done resining, I can peel off that tape and the sides are protected. If I do a painting and the sides look crappy because I have a bunch of blue here and nothing over here and some thick drips over here, I will go when it's done, I will sand the sides, I will paint them with acrylic to match the painting, and then I will do a top coat over the entire thing plus the sides. So that is how I do my sides. I think in every single way. Every single scenario I just listed. But I get that question a lot. I apologize for the ring light, guys, if it's showing up. I'm going to check right now to see how bad it is. It's, you know, a double-edged sword. I have a bright, beautiful light here, but then there's a reflection. If I don't have it, I'm recording in a dungeon, so I guess I'm screwed either way, which is nothing new for me. No, that's not too bad for you. That's good. I don't think you're seeing it at all. So, just popping some of the bubbles. The heat gun will take care of most, but the less heat I have to use, the better. The flame of the torch goes right down and just targets them right away. Whereas the heat gun, you gotta like really hold it over that area for it to do its job and then you take a risk of burning your resin. So now we're going to flip it. I'm going to do the blues up here and the pinks and purples down here. And I'm going to be careful as to where I put them. So I'm going to start off with the aquamarine. Don't want to do too much. Okay, there's that right on top and along the side of it, the turquoise skin. Yeah, I got a complaint from my last video. Um, because Apparently, the word tutorial doesn't signal people that it's teaching, so there will be talking in it. And this person was mad because it was 17 minutes before any art hit the canvas. And apparently, I need to do a tutorial on how to use the fast forward button, right? Because I guess that's not common knowledge. Actually, it is common knowledge. They just need to run their mouth to be heard, you know, which I'll be honest with you. It doesn't bother me, but I just have to say something because I'm not the type of person to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's just the, the cold, hard truth. All right. So now same thing over here, but I'm going to come up in this way up over through here. I want some of this color to come in over these planets, too. That was the purple galaxy. Here is the purple rain. I'm going to pour a little 
lap right there. And then we have the hot pink See, so you don't need a lot of color. Just kind of string it through there. And you can always go back and add more. So now here's the, the kicker. I want the gold, but I don't want a lot. I just kind of want to get a little bit going through there. So I'm just going to I'm sticking the stick in here and then I'm just kind of going through like that because I don't want a lot. Gold will take over. See like this will be too much here but we'll blow it off. Ooh, I haven't done anything there. What am I doing? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take some clear and again, right on top of those collars to push them down. Okay. There we go. This time I actually saved enough. Okay. I'm not sure about this area over here, right here, because I like the way it looks, so I'm not going to add anything to it yet. All right, now I'm going to move the colors around. Maybe. First, we got to get the heat gun to turn on. God, I got the new one because <laughs> I think I resined. Sometimes you'll resin your switch. There we go. Had to show it who was boss. Okay, first I'm gonna go around and heat it really good so that it'll move easier for me. Okay, and here we go.
I'm going to blow a little bit over the planets so they're not so bold just sitting there. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so now I'm going to stop for a minute, and I'm going to look at what I have here. See if I want to, I know I want to add a little bit here. First, I need to get the piece of garbage out of here. I'm really loving this. This up here. It needs a little tiny bit just right here. And that is really all it needs. So let me just do this. Do a little bit of this. This. Right. I'm going to blow that around after I put a little bit of clear on it. See, we have to follow suit or else it doesn't look the same as the rest. There. Perfect. That's all I wanted. Now, over here, I am going to add just a little tiny bit more of the blue again there. Just to get it to come this way over this planet. So... Oop, didn't want to do that. We'll put a little bit of gold in there too. And actually some purple. Break it up a little bit. clear.
yes, yes. Oh, that's gorgeous. I cannot wait to give you guys a close up. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is pulling a little bit here. So. That tells me that's not even. So I need to put a little bit more over here. So again, with the blue. And then we're going to fix the canvas. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's it. It's clear. You know, you could always use clear to push this back. See how that's pushing that back? You could do that. How nice that works. go I'm gonna call that done because it's in my eyes absolutely gorgeous I could not ask for more I really couldn't again I'm going to use some clear just to like I see this purple line right here that I'm not really in love with so I'm gonna use my clear to shape it in a way that I do like it. Okay. And then right here, just want to Get a little bit of that moon to pop out. I don't want all of that color there like that. Let's push it back a little bit. Make it even push it a little bit. And that's nice right there. Please stay. <laughs> Stay, please stay. Right. What do we have going on over here? Are these colors that I added? They sure are. And I'm just going to blow that one area out, I think. And then we'll take care of some of this gold also. I'm going to push it out. Like that. That's pretty. That is a perte. All right. You know, it's not fair that you guys can't see the dimension in this because especially like this area right here, these colors look like ribbons flowing through the clear. It's absolutely beautiful. 
So let me just torch this quick and then I will give you a bird's eye view. Nope, that would be from above. I'll give you a Tammy view. <laughs> Alrighty, clutch your pearls. Here we go. This is just, oh God, come on and focus. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so I know it's hard to tell. Let's see here how I can do this to show you. Come on, back up. Here we go. Look at that. Can you see that depth? That is just absolutely beautiful. It's flowing over the planet so beautifully. In person, it's really, really something else. So I'm thinking it should probably be hung like this. And there's only one area I'm not happy with. And that's this right here, how it's pulling out that way. So I may just take a stick and try to pull some of that back. So you can move it around and kind of play with it a little bit so you get it designed the way you like it. I'll do that off camera. But anyway, so this area right here, how the, the purple looks like a ring. It looks like it's floating on top of that blue because I put the blue down first and then a little bit of the clear and then I added the purple on top. So that's what it does. It kind of pushes it down. Same thing over here. You could see like the pockets, the round pockets over here where I put the clear. It's just really, really gorgeous. So that's it, guys. That's my part of the collaboration. I'm going to uh, fix this little part here and give you the final view. All right, so I put some purple and pink there and just blew it around. I like that a lot better. So those big straight lines. So here we go. Now I'm going to warn you, this pink mixing with the purple is showing up brown on camera, but it's not brown in person, okay? It's a really pretty maroon color. This is, I think, my favorite here, the moon with the purple planet. So the, can't, the colors are not showing up as they are in person. It's really gorgeous. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my part of the TNT Space Explosion collaboration. Be sure to go check out Tam's Creative Corner to see what she made. And then... Uh, if you need any links for anything, I have it all below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video if you want. That would be a big help. Um, spread the word about my channel. And I have a lot of artwork for sale on Etsy. If you're interested, go take a look. The name of the channel is Art by Tammy Anderson. The name of the website, I should say, on Etsy. The store. The store, Tammy. The store. <laughs> Third time's a charm. I love you guys. And I hope you all have an amazing night. Happy boring.